much for sharing this great project and so many great ideas. I would like to call to stage uh, our panelists uh, or our response uh, team, uh, two of whom have already uh, spoken yesterday. So welcome Tim and welcome Cecilia. Uh, and we, I'm happy to introduce also Yasemin uh, Chakral Osavet. Uh, she is uh, together with Marmara University uh, and uh, will be joining us today. Thank you so much. So definitely, uh, where Tim left us yesterday, uh, where you said great things happen outside of your comfort zones. So this is, as a designer, definitely outside of my comfort zone. Uh, both, and I think also, as uh, in a way, as Istanbul, to really listen to the words of the kids in such kind of uh, in, the, in the rawest way is also, I think, um, it's a little unsettling. Uh, so it's it's. Uh, it's really nice to see these two pre presentations, I think, that challenge at least uh, to a designer how we kind of operate in our offices, talking to the client only, if possible. Very kind of uh, controlled uh, conversations so, you know, things can move efficiently. So w what we have seen, uh, I think, a very inefficient process uh, that uh, Hector described or what you would call a very inefficient process, but a very efficient, of course, process to build a community, uh, which is a something that um, is a, um, something that I would really want to see how, uh, put into practice um, in, in my environment also. I'm sure it has happened, in, but I, I haven't witnessed it, so this is some, somehow a craving for me. So in that sense, I'll ask my first question to uh, Yasemin Anam, in hope that she will kind of um, ask also to, uh, to the presenters. Uh, you are teaching uh, public administration. Uh, and we've seen a we have seen efforts to make it understandable uh, with the Istanbul team, trying to make it understandable to children, uh, with Hector, trying to communicate it with, them, uh, with the community to, to then get the project moving. Uh, is it really that complicated? I mean, I, I'm really curious, is it really that complicated public administration that um, I, I, know, I know nothing about it in a way, like when I sit and think, uh, I, I decide that I'm ignorant. And why, and how, what are the tools could be introduced that actually it, it is not that uh, impossible to kind of understand the steps that creates a EMR plan or a kind of a building uh, a zoning plan in, in Istanbul. You should have a Merhabalar. Öncelikle hani teşekkür ediyorum böyle bir yerde bulunduğum için. Şimdi yerel yönetimler aslında sonradan dahil olduğum bir alan. Şehir kentçisiyim. Çocuk ve kent ilişkisi üzerine 11 sene önce düşünmeye başladım ama pratik anlamda 5 senedir bu alanla ilgili çalışıyorum. Yaklaşık 4 senedir de yerel yönetimler bölümünde öğretim üyesi olarak çalışmaya başlayınca çocuk yerel yönetimler katılım boyutu üzerinde çalışmaya başladım. Ee, orada aslında şöyle bir şey gördüm. Yerel yönetim İstanbul ölçeğinde e, yerel yönetimlerle yaptığım çalışmalarda e, çocukla ilgili aslında çok hassaslar. Gerçekten bir şeyler yapmak istiyorlar. Ama bütüncül bir çocuk politikası olmadığı için yerelde bu üretilemediği için e, çok kopuk birbirinden e, bağdaşmayan şeyler yapılabiliyor. Kendi yaptıklarını da kendi vizyonlarında sunmakla ilgili çok ciddi sıkıntıları var. Stratejik planlarına yansıtamayabiliyorlar. Çünkü kendi içinde ee, çocukla ilgili tam tanımlı bir birim olmadığı için bütüncül e, kopup o birimler arası iletişimi sağlayan bir e, eş güdüm e, maalesef yok. Bu da uygulamada ciddi sıkıntı yaratıyor. Planla uygulama arasında zaten ciddi sıkıntı olduğunu şehir planlama disiplininden sonra yerel yönetimlere geçtiğimde anladım. E, şehir planları da e, aslında yönetimin nasıl olduğu, kamu yönetiminin, yerel yönetimin nasıl olduğu düşünülmeden bir eğitim disiplini veriliyor. Yönetimden biraz kopuk bir eğitim verildiği için daha sonra şehir plancıları yerel yönetimlerde istihdam edildiklerinde ciddi bir şok yaşıyorlar. Çünkü yönetime kendilerini anlatmakla ilgili bir sıkıntı içerisinde kendilerini görüyorlar ve yönetimin de imar planları nasıl yürütülür ve aslında en çok kentli için ve daha insani boyutta üretilmesi gerekiri çok iyi bilmeden sadece yönetim üzerine, yönetim bilimleri üzerine çalıştığı görüldüğü için ikisinin arasında çok ciddi bir kopukluk var. Bu kopukluğun sebep olduğu, aynı zamanda şehir planlama eğitiminde aslında e, bir ders kapsamında öğrencilerle bulduğumuz bir şey vardı. Kenti genel olarak, belki dünya çapında da be, e, benzer şeyler vardır süreçler. 
Biz yüzde kırklık sağlıklı yetişkin ve daha çok erkek yani gücü elinde olan bir kesim için tasarlıyor ve planlıyoruz ve öyle yönetiyoruz. Yani dezavantajlı dediğimiz yaşlılar, engelliler ve bunların içerisinde Türkiye'de en azından üçte birlik nüfusu temsil eden çocuklar, göçmenler, işte farklı etnik gruplar çok temsil edilmiyor ve bir gün hasta olduğunuzda ya da hamile olduğunuzda kenti deneyimlerken çok ciddi sıkıntılı olduğunu fark ediyorsunuz. Benim çocuk konusuna eğilmemin bir nedeni de hamile olup kenti deneyimlemem. Sonra çocuğumla ve bebek arabasıyla kenti deneyimlediğimde o vahşi yönünü görmem ve çocukla ilgili çok çocukların ciddi ızdırap çektiklerinde de bundan 11 sene önce çocuk resim yarışmasında çocuk resimlerini okuduğumda çok net bir şekilde nefes alamıyoruz. Bu kentte çok, çok ciddi sıkıntı çekiyoruz. Sesimizi birisi duysa gibi mesajları okuduğumda buna ilgi duydum. Burada e, kopukluk dediğim gibi uygulamada e, çocuğa bakmak istiyorlar. Çok güzel bir aslında enerji var e, uygulamacılarda. Ama bununla ilgili aslında tasarlayıcılar ve planlayıcılarda bir ilgi henüz yeni uyanıyor. Yani ben bugün bu toplantıyı çok değerli buluyorum. Gerçekten uygulamacıların da burada olduğunu görünce. E, bunlar gittikçe arttıkça, e, çeşitli etkinliklerle duyuldukça e, bu ilginin nasıl bir ekiple birlikte yürütüldüğünde daha sağlıklı olacağını fark edeceklerine inanıyorum. Yani tasar, tasarımcılar, işte çocukla ilgili bilgi sahibi olan belki davranış bilimciler, çocuk gelişimciler ve e, bu konuya ilgi duyan işte yönetim kademesiyle birlikte bunu çok güzel ve özel sektörün ilgisiyle mutlaka çok güzel şeyler olabileceğine inanıyorum. Sorun var aslında e, çocuk İstanbul üzerinden hemen hızlıca geçersek. E, ben burada şey merak ediyorum, aslında şu an devam eden bir projemiz var, orada hani gözlemleme fırsatı da oluyor bazı konularda. Bir, e, bu çocuklar aynı çocuklar oluyor mu her seferinde spontane çeşitli gruplardan? E, yani siz duyuru yapıyorsunuz ve oradan kim gelirse şeklinde mi? Yoksa takip ettiğiniz işte birkaç ay süresince değişik atölyeleri yapan aynı çocuklar oluyor mu? Böylece süreci gözlemleme fırsatınız oluyor mu? Ben cevaplayayım hemen, kısa hızlıca. Ee, biz açık çağrı yapmış oluyoruz herkese. Ee, dolayısıyla süreklilik içinde yani atölye programımız e, ilan edildiği zaman onun birkaç tane farklı başlığına katılmak isteyen olabilir. Bu bir süreklilik, bu, bu düzeyde bir süreklilik ama hep aynı çocukları takip etmek şeklinde değil. Ee, isteyen herkes açık, isteyen beş atölye, isteyen bir atölyeye katılır. Dolayısıyla biz e, kimi zaman bir kez dokunmuş oluyoruz, kimi zaman daha çok kez. Bu ailenin de e, o şeyine bağlı, yani talebine bağlı bir en önemli şey, e, yani bizim için en kıymetli olan şey, bütün çocuklar ve aileler için de bunu çok fark ediyoruz. Bu tür çalışmaları herkesin katılabileceği şekle dönüştürmek. Bu da bu ülkede ücretsiz yapmak anlamına geliyor ki en kıymetli olan şey bu. Katılım bu anlamda geniş bir yer fazlede gerçekleşiyor o zaman. Sibel'in ee, dediği gibi kullandığımız iletişim araçlarının erişemediği kesimler var tabii. Ücretsiz yapıyor olsak bile. Biz dolayısıyla kendi iletişim alanlarımızı da kullanarak, okullarla iletişim öğretmenlerle iletişim alan şeylerimizi kullanarak ağlarımızı bu kesimden çocukları da özellikle davet ederek de katılmalarını sağlamaya çalışıyoruz. Yani sadece bunu duyurmak yeterli olmuyor. Bu tür iletişim belediyelerle işbirliği yapıyoruz, kendi ilişkilerimizi kullanıyoruz. Bu önemli bir şey. Cecilia, this will be a question to you. Uh, I would like to kind of uh to ask a question to you next. Um, it's probably a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but um, since Bernard van Leer has taken on this uh, Urban 95 program, which um, is super inspiring, obviously can bring together a whole room. Um, and this, in this conversation that has just started between planners and, and early childhood specialists, I think we, we saw a very particular method of um, parts, like creating a planning environment in the Hector's um, presentation, but how much is Bernard van Leer interested in actually fostering that? Um, because I, I think that, um, because obviously the earlier panel, also very valuable work, very interesting work, um, starts with the leadership. Uh, but at the same time, there is the opposite 
also. I mean, I won't call them opposites, but I, I would like to also see like uh, how much room will, will you be creating uh, for for dealing grassroots. Yeah, uh, maybe, and yesterday I probably didn't have time, but we actually believe that participatory processes lead to sustain any kind of policy. So you need to start working in, in all different levels. So on one side, you need participatory processes to sustain social mobility, so they can basically support any kind of project. I, I think that the challenge that we thought with Urban 95 is that usually children under three years old don't speak. So if you're thinking about participatory processes where you want to get babies' points of views, it's kind of difficult because they, they don't speak language usually, or, or they're just starting to speak. So we're not thinking about like the normal kind of workshops that, that I've heard today. Uh, so that's when we think it's very important to have, to, to kind of break this silos that we usually think of when we're thinking about early childhood development, that we're thinking about children from zero to five, or we're even including pregnant women, but we're actually thinking about a community that cares about babies. And this means bringing together all different stakeholders and trying to promote like different participatory processes that you can invite on one side, the direct caregivers that are usually mothers in most societies. Of course, we want to engage more fathers, and that's part of the challenge. Can we get more fathers' voices? Why aren't Turkish fathers taking care of their babies directly? Is there anything in the public space that we can make differently so we can engage more fathers to come together and take care of their children and play with their children and interact with their children? Are we doing something differently uh, about elderly people? Usually in many different societies in the world, the main caregiver are usually grandparents. Um, and just to give you an example, because we do have many positive experiences of participatory processes, and especially in, in Latin America, we were talking with Pedro this morning, and and there's, there's a lot of things going, in, that are going on in, in Brazil, in, in Lima, in Pura, in many of the cities that in Bogota. Um, and I think one of the interesting things that we realize is, for example, many of the elderly caregivers, they say that one of the main requirements in public space is to have access to bathrooms. And this sounds uh, ridiculous that this would be one of the barriers for many, like, uh, all caregivers to use public space in a more frequent way, but this is definitely one of the key issues for many elderly people to, to use and, and to spend more time in public space. So I'm just sharing a couple of examples, but I do want to say that there's a huge tension between participatory processes and the speed that many times municipalities need to promote in order to implement progress. And, and we need to find ways, and I would be curious to know which has been the timing of these participatory processes, because of course, ideally, you want to have everybody involved in designing all these beautiful things, but I see many different uh, tensions. On one side, you get these great ideas, you get a lot of engagement from the community, they are empowered to support the idea, but on the other hand, also you may be creating expectations that it's very hard to, to accomplish, many times because of the cost of, of the kind of ideas that come up. Uh, so I, I think we need to find a way that we can deal better in creating participatory processes that can gather different views from different stakeholders, put together a plan, reach a social consensus about different ideas. But you also need to find a way that experts can make those ideas be more cost effective. Because sometimes the tension there doesn't allow us to implement things. Damon, I guess you have to answer. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if I have an answer. Um, I, I feel like I've, you know, learned a couple things that you know as we have with Hector, uh, from people who do work in community organizing, who draw a very strict distinction between, I think, what is oftentimes our notion as designers and planners of a participatory process that is attached to a single project, and that is organized through. Um, a mechanism to gather feedback, whether that's a meeting or a survey, that then is distilled into some kind of consensus that is then in theory implemented, versus a process of what they would call building power, right? Uh, where there's an ongoing effort to build the capacity and the agency of people in a neighborhood, right? Such that when the municipality comes to them, it's not the beginning point they are ready to meet them with their own notions and ideas 
And oftentimes that doesn't result in consensus. Oftentimes, at least where we work, it is a knockdown and drag out fight. Um, and that's, I think, why oftentimes our clients want to um, spend as much time in a continuous fashion building that power, oftentimes to the dismay of us planners and designers. So, I mean, to unpack that in context of this particular project, um, you talked about sort of like what where was the timing or the inputting point, and I would say, you know, um, it wasn't that we as designers went there and said, well, would you like a soccer field or a you know, volleyball field? It was just more like, well, what does it take for our community groups to get along and understand the process to build and invest into our parks? So once the community groups um, had the committee meeting, monthly meetings, throughout the, the planning process, which was 18 months, and they once they gained sort of the understanding of the park building process in South Philadelphia that is very specific, which is sort of making the policy public, um, which is something that you're talking about. Um, then the issue wasn't so much about, oh, we have this beautiful rendering, we're afraid that the community will expect, you know, $7 million project when we only have $2 million, right? Like, the community is, very much aware of what it takes to raise either two million dollars or seven million dollars or none at all, and what that mean that what that would mean for their coalition. But I mean, this has been really great, also a great uh, kind of uh, awakening for me that uh, this actually is also affirmation that we are doing the right thing, uh, that we are trying to build a powerful community around the issues of babies and childhood and communities. And that takes a lot of stakeholders, and we have a room full of psychologists and early childhood uh, specialists and, and kindergarten teachers and, and, and municipal staff and architects and designers. So I, I guess uh, it's a good, good affirmation uh, as a method that we, we just need to move forward with it. Um, so that's, I just had to say it because I thought, I was like, yeah, okay, so this, this, is, uh, this is a good, good thing to do. So in that sense, uh, continuing hearing children is of course a very important part um, of that also. Um, and I'm, I'm curious actually, um, comments maybe from Tim, Tim also, in, um, I don't know how much you work directly with, the, with children, uh, uh, and, um, or do you have any kind of methods or um, uh, processes that you'd like to point to, to say, yeah, like, you should also look at these, these are also good examples of, um, of tr creating agency for children? Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a long history of children's participatory planning uh, in urban planning and design. Uh, some people in this room know of it. Uh, at an international level, work that came out of UNICEF and the Growing Up in Cities program is probably the most well known. And I think, so a place to start is to say, what have we learned from that model? That's a highly participatory model. It's a strong focus on process, the direct engagement of children in decision making, creating governance, or trying to influence decision making governance. And I think it's broadly recognized that that model has not succeeded. It has not succeeded in any real, meaningful way in influencing how cities are built. Um, it may have had some marginal benefits in other areas, but I, this is not me talking. This is a book that came out last year that described the progress on the influence of city building by children as being glacial, okay? These are academics who are working in this field. So that's not working. We also know there are plenty of examples of, of so-called consultation, engagement, that are window dressing, that are tokenistic, that are an idle wheel in the process, you know, the, uh, a model is produced and, and, and from the children somewhere over there and it's pulled into a room and everybody claps and then everybody does what they were going to do anyway. So these are real tensions, I think maybe this is some of what you were alluding to, Cecilia. This is difficult stuff. Um, and. So I guess my, what I, I'm a skeptic. I start from a skeptical point of view and, and to try and, I mean that in a kind of philosophical sense. Um, what are the questions we are trying to answer here? What don't we know? What difference do we want to make? And how can we find out what we want to know and make a difference in an effective and a fair way? 
And so I think those are the questions we should be starting with, not how do we involve children. There might be some circumstances where we just don't need to involve children because we have all the answers. There might be other cases where we need to go right back to first principles, and it sounds to me like Mifflin Square Park is one of those cases because the, the ordinary you know, uh, uh, methods of participation weren't getting to the root of the conflicts in that space. So I think that, that why question, why are we, do we want to involve children? And then the how, um, and then you know, how do we do that in a good way? Since, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'd like to ask uh, Jens to contribute mm -hmm. because he, he, he wanted to, and <laughs> I, I think it's only fair, <laughs> so please. Yeah, so I'm not representing UNICEF much as I would in the sense that I'm also just starting there but I, I also looked at all this previous work that UNICEF did and I can also confirm and I'm happy also that Tim raised it. I think uh, there has been a time that participation with children has been set so high as an objective whereas I think the cases also show that it's, participation is also rather a mean to get somewhere and to build that citizenship conversation with children to also actually do something um, whereas also at the other side you also say like you can just suddenly start participation on a concrete project if there's also uh, a very deep uh, distrust and there's no civic citizenship or there's a lot of uh, things to be fixed so we have to work on both sides I think um, and I think as a, what I, I think is very important is to try to build that double level and, and to actually avoid the tension on a neighborhood level. Because I think on a neighborhood level you can have results quite in a limited amount of time, like five years span, for example. So you can work with the uh, community to build that trust and dive deep into very concrete projects and to avoid the tokenistic approach, for example, that is, I think, also very well described by a lot of specialists already in the 70s and 80s that that's not the, the way to go. But at your side also not expect that you can go immediately into a very refined participation and have results the, the, the next year. So I think it has to be present both and it can be very feasible on the level. Thank you so much. In the Çocukların bir şey eklemek istiyorum yine bizim gözlemlerimizden hareketle. Şimdi bu çocukların sesini işte e, yerel yönetimler duysun, şehir plancıları duysun, mimarlar duysun vesaire diye çabalıyoruz esas olarak. E, ama şu yani yan etki olarak ne kadar gerekli olduğunu da duyduk. Az, e, Ailelerin de kendi çocuklarını duyması gerektiğini de gördük. Yani bütün bu çalışma süreç içinde zaten çalışma şeklimiz içinde mümkün olduğunca maksimum aile katılımını da sağlamaya çalışıyoruz. Onların da gözlemesi, izlemesi için. Oralarda aslında ailelerin de en yakınındaki çocukların en yakındaki ailelerin de çok fazla çocukların sorunlarının e, farkında o, olamadıklarına da şahit ol, olduk. E, bu büyüyen metropolde çok fazla imkanlara sahip olup her tür şeyden yararlandığını, yararlandırdığını düşünen ailelerin de aslında çocuğun gerçek ihtiyaçlarının daha farklı olduğunu keşfettiğini e, de görmüş olduk. Dolayısıyla çocukları dahil ederken aslında bu aileleri de beraber dahil etmenin, onları duy, duymalarını sağlamanın bir yolunu bulmak lazım galiba. Bunun çok çarpıcı bir örneği vardı. Biraz detaylı anlatmak ister misiniz? Ben hatırlıyorum o günü. Evet, ben de hepimiz çok iyi hatırlıyorum. Bu atölyelerimizden birinde çocuklardan İstanbul rehberi, e, ya, yabancı bir ülkeden gelen çocuklara e, İstanbul'da yaşayan çocuklar İstanbul'da nereye götürürsünüz? Nereye, nereye götürmek isterler? Nerede eğlenceli vakit geçirirsiniz? 
grup çalışmaları yapıyorlar. 5-6 kişilik grupları halinde diye soruyoruz ve onun bir rehberini hatırlamalarını istiyoruz. Ee, ama birkaç şartımız var. Birincisi bu şartlardan en önemlisi e, hiç para harcamamak ya da çok az para harcıyor olmak. E, yani bu İstanbul e, rehberliği sırasında e, çocukların çocukları rehberliği. E, bir e, çocuk katılan çocuklardan biri işte üst sosyoekonomik kesimden e, geldiği belli olan bildiğimiz. E, bu, Katıldığı grup içinde diğer çocukların aralarındaki tartışmaya, paylaşımlara dahil olamadı ee, ve kendini çok kötü hissetti. Çünkü diğer çocuklar işte gittikleri işte Gülhane Parkı, şurada Galata Köprüsü'nde balık tutmak vesaire vesaire gibi böyle zengin bir İstanbul çerçevesinden konuşurken e, ağlamaya başladı. Çünkü dahil olamamak onu çok geldi. E, ki o, o zamana kadar gayet iyi iletişimi güçlü olan bir çocukken işte ne olduğunu anlamaya çalıştık. Ben bu konuşulanların hiçbirini bilmiyorum e, diye ağlamaya başladı ve gitmek istiyorum dedi. Neyse biraz konuştuk vesaire ve annetliğiyle de daha sonra konuştuk. E, dahil oldu çalışmaya sonuna kadar ee, ve e, çıkar çıkmaz da beni hemen oralara götür. E, sen beni sadece işte AVM'lere ve kendi istediğin müzelere götürüyorsun. Ben bunların hiçbirini götürmüyorum, bilmiyorum dedi. E, biz de anneyle hani başımıza iş açtık, <gülüyor> kusura bakmayın diye ayrıldık ama e, çıkar çıkmaz gerçekten o söz konusu olan yerlerden birine gideceklerdi hep beraberce. Bunu bu tabii çok böyle uç noktada ve çok somut yaşadığımız bir örnek oldu ama sıklıkla benzer şeyleri yaşıyoruz. Ee, çalışmaların sonunda aileleri de dahil edip onların da çocuklara soru sormalarını, yorum yapmalarını istediğimiz zaman çocuklardan duydukları e, bizden çok onları şaşırtıyor. Bu kadar farkındalığın, fark... çünkü hani hep şey vardır ya, Çocukları hep çok seven ama daha az saygı duyan bir toplumu diye düşünüyorum ben sevgimiz sonsuz ve sınırsız ama dinlemek, duymak, anlamaya çalışmak için bir fırsat e, olduğu zaman onlar da çok ciddi şaşırıyorlar. Çok teşekkürler. Evet, soru sormak isteyen varsa soruları alabiliriz. Buyurun. <gülüyor> Merhaba, ben Maltepe'den katılıyorum, şehir pendisiyim. Sibel Hanım'la bir atölyede çalışma fırsatı bulmuştuk. O zaman da sonuç olarak merak ediyordum, şimdi de merak ediyorum. Şu anda bir iş kısmet sormak. Acaba bu çalışmaların sonunda e, değişik yaş gruplarına veya değişik cinsiyet gruplarına göre algılarda ve beklentilerde, çocuklarda e, belirgin farklılıklar var mı? Varsa nelerdir? Bizimle paylaşabilir misiniz? Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkürler Bahadır Bey. E, algılarda farklılık var mı? Yani en basit tabii ki var yaş grubuna göre. Kendi ihtiyaçları... E, Değiştikçe algılarda da farklılık tabii ki oluyor. Ee, ama biz hani biraz önce sunumda da böyle altını e, çizmeye çalıştığımız şey e, bu sosyoekonomi en fazla farklılık, algılarda en fazla farklılık sosyoekonomik background farklılığında ortaya çıkıyor. Bizim en çok gözlediğimiz şey o oluyor. Yani hikayette olan çocuklar, hikayette olmayan çocuklar diye belki ayırabiliriz onu. Hikayette olan çocuklar çok fazla iletişim, çevreleriyle iletişim içinde olan, mekanla ilişki kuran çocuklar olmuş oluyor. Mekanla ilişki kurmadığı zaman kendi mekanına kapanma ve belki kendi içine kapanma şeklinde e, bir şeyle karşılaşıyoruz. En büyük algılardaki hani zenginlik açısından düşündüğümüz zaman 
en büyük farklılığı öyle tanımlayabilirim diye düşünüyorum. Bilmiyorum var mı eklemek evet. istediğin bir şey. Yani ben sadece bir şey ekleyebilirim. Ee, ebeveynlerle yaptığımız çalışmalarda siz de hatırlarsınız, katılmıştınız. Çok güzel öyküler anlatmışlardı. İşte hayali ağacın çatalında, balkonun o tarafında dilek yapardık, şöyle top oynardı, şunu şöyle yapardık, bu böyle çok böyle büyük hikayeler anlatmışlardı. Şöyle düşünün, yani hayatında kaydırak kayabildiği, sallanabildiği parklardan başka pek fazla bir şey olmayan bir çocuğu, anlatacağı bir hikaye yok. Yani hikayeler ki çok önemli kendi kişisel gelişimleri açısından da. En çok hikayeyi zaten mahalle ortamında büyüyen çocuklar anlatıyorlar. Ee, küçücük çocukların çizimlerinde bile karalıyorlar, hiçbir şey anlamazsınız. Biz onlara soruyoruz, bu nedir ya diyoruz. Muazzam bir hikaye anlatıyorlar. Ee, bize onları da hep motive eden istedikleri şey hakikaten hikayeleri olabileceği ortam var. Şimdi this is a kind of I think an interesting observation. I'm curious. Uh, I would like to ask both Cecilia and also Damon and Jay on, uh, because we we have this to me kind of peculiar reverse expectation, right? Like that the more um, the more privileged you are in the city, the the less stories you you have about the city, so the less interaction you actually get to have. Is that something that you've seen? Um, like in a way, we our conclusion is you need to yes, you need to help disadvantaged kids. Obviously, but there there has to be some focus on also kids who end up uh, growing in middle class um, sterilized environments. They are also suffering. I mean, uh, suffering whatever. I, I mean, it's a. I, I don't know what the right terminology is. I'm, I'm curious what what you have seen around the world. I think that what's interesting, and I I would also like to just uh, uh, respond to our friend from Maltepe municipality that I think it's really interesting that when you're analyzing data, and that's one. That's why one of our key components is data analysis, is that you take into account all the needs of your city, all the needs of your neighborhood. And you're always going to have these gaps. And of course, you're going to prioritize the families that have more vulnerabilities, because usually that's the mandate of a municipality. But you also need to take into account what's happening in the rest of neighborhoods, especially if you're thinking from a public life point of view. And, uh, and I think that participatory process can allow to identify some of these gaps. So what I'm trying to say is that it's also very important to, to have a, a regular analysis of administrative data that you're currently collecting, but I, I also think there's, there's a, an important need of analyzing uh, this different kind of, uh, of data that allows you to have inputs on, on understanding what kind of problems you're dealing in a specific neighborhood. I think this is very common, what you just described on, on the difference between uh, many, like uh, at least in, in many of the countries that we're living in, uh, that we're working in, in India, uh, again in, in South America, but I would say even in, in, in some of the experiences that we have in, in Israel, for example, you might see that this gap is basically depriving the richest kids of enjoying public space. So what are we doing from a regulation point of view in order to change this should be a question that from a policy making point of view we should always be addressing. So when you're dealing with uh, managing a city, you're dealing with managing all different kinds of problems and this is definitely one of the challenges. How does that resonate in the in North American context? Well, I found the story also very striking about the, the rich kid crime. And it, it definitely reminded me of a social psychologist that um, Ed and Hector, we've been very inspired by and we're lucky to be able to collaborate with, named Dr. Mindy Fulwolf, who writes very much about how both mental and physical health is something that is socially produced. And one thing I think this brings up is that if you are an urban planner or a city official, it actually is a different type of risk than maybe Tim was talking about, but it's actually a risky thing to really listen to young people. Because one of the things you're gonna hear about is the fractures of your own society that surround you. Um, and so whether that's a fracture of class, or um, especially uh, in, in the US context, a fracture of race. And so uh, there is, I think, really important discussions about how the production of whiteness and white supremacy is also a, a process of cutting oneself off right, from the environment that one needs to be socially and physically healthy. Um, it reminds me of, of, uh, of a project that we were working on with young people 
and you know, one student for whatever reason really wanted to build a wall, and you know, and, you know, and this of course is a charged architectural feature, uh, maybe forever, but certainly in today's United States. And uh, there was a there was an argument that came out, and I remember one. Uh, a uh, young woman uh, yelled at the top of her lungs, and I always remember this, you can't have your own private built environment, right? <laughs> so no matter how tall your, your belt, your wall is, no matter how many spiky wires are on top, um, you, cannot, you, know, you cannot accomplish that. And I think many of us live in denial of that fact. Okay, this is getting very passionate, uh, but we have to end soon, so I'll take one, one more question from the audience. But it doesn't exist. Oh, Yid, how help us? Again to Damon and Jay, uh, and also getting back or lowering back to 95 again. Where the parents, I, I, I think you also interviewed or included parents of young children and babies and so on, where they, their demands went beyond the park. Because when you discuss the park, you also discuss access to park, uh, safety around the park. No? So, in our case, we heard about safety issues more uh, around the park than inside the park. So I wonder your experience on that, whether they went beyond the park limits about their demands of, of the neighborhood and so on. I think in my, in my own practice, it, um, you know, our, our work definitely involved talking and working with young people. Um, it, has been less about sort of uh, more of a documenting what young people demand, but just us as designers documenting the process of their learning, right? So I think that's what our presentation was trying to focus on, with hopes that that sort of um, shares sort of, uh, the, the, some sort of practical information in our in the design industry, right? Because us as designers, we um, have this aspirational goals, um, you know, as a brown woman of Asian, you know, immigrant descent, I imagine what does democratic anti-racist space look like, as Simon was mentioning, and the only way, you know, for me to find out is to talk to brown kids who are very young as well as talk to brown grandmas who are very old and sort of understand their issues in mobility, play, you know, all the good technical aspects that I need to learn and interpret it as a designer. So yeah, I think that I think that it's it's it's quite it really depends on what their quote unquote demands are, but I and and we are, you know, diligently always documenting what they want in specific spatial setting, but also um, as, a, as, as a studio practice, we've been spending much more time on like, how do communities learn um, to own their own and sort of change the course of building their own environment. And in terms of safety, uh, no doubt, right? Um, it, it would usually be like a real waste of time unless we began the conversation saying, we know everyone wants the park to be safer. We know everyone wants the park to be cleaner. Um, let's talk about some other things right now. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, for example, funny enough, in the project that we showed, uh, the client had received and raised enough money just to commission us to design the park. Um, but I think not telling their foundation sponsors, what they told us was that if we wanted the job, we also had to produce a plan that addressed affordable housing in the neighborhood and the retail and the public space of the neighborhood, right? And so we were maybe um, dumb enough to, to, take, to take this on. And, and certainly it, it was something where um, you know, there were some people who became involved in the process who wanted to talk about nothing else than building a fence around the park, right? Maybe electrical, uh, <laughs> if, you know, if possible. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I think that the, you know, our, our best response there is not necessarily to say, well, as designers, we don't think you should have a fence, you don't have a fence now for 100 years, da da da, but in fact, to actually find the other voices uh, within these organizations to say, well, actually, like, I don't really think that's such a good idea, and to try to use our tools as designers, making drawings, making uh, alternatives of what it could be to facilitate that kind of internal deliberation. All right, thank you so much. Uh, another coffee break, and we will meet at five. Um, yeah, looking forward. <laughs>